Hey Sherry, do you want to learn how to shoot a bow gun? I've got an extra one there. We can double team this next boss. Eh, never mind. What's going on, everyone? It's the Niskel. Welcome back to Resident Evil 2. In the last episode, we got stuck in the sewer levels and fought a giant crocodile. And in this episode, we are advancing forward. Seeing what else is past the sewers. Maybe we'll meet Leon. Who knows? Back here, as always, there are still these handgun bullets. Oh, thank God the game didn't make me a liar. <laughs> I've actually noticed that using ammo on everything and actually killing everything has kind of made me weary on how the rest of the game is going to go. I might run out of bowgun bolts, which might not be good seeing as how I handicap myself. So just in case I did bring my handgun, let's just agree to this. I'm going to continue using the bowgun for the main bosses of the game. But let's say if I do run out, in the event I do run out, the handgun is a nice substitute. Since they do about the same amount of damage, the bowgun just does three times as more because it shoots three shots at the same time. So let's agree to that for now, unless you say nay, in which case, well, I guess I have to listen. Nah, I'm kidding. So whatever you guys want, that'll just be the plan for now, just to get through my silly handicap. Let's go, Sherry. Should be a key back here. There it is. I love how it says this is the C panel key when obviously that is a D. Very big oversight, Capcom. What is wrong with you? Actually, why does it say that? Ah. D for down. Got it! So it's not an oversight by translation errors. I'm just stupid. Anyway, let's get out of here. <laughs> Tired of making myself look like a jerk. And... Now for the annoying alarm system. Can you imagine waking up to that every single morning? God, I'd shoot myself. in there, Sherry. Her forehead's burning up. I've got to hurry before the embryos pupate. Interesting. And I love how Claire didn't even put her hand remotely close to Sherry's head. And all of a sudden, oh my gosh, your head's burning up. I can literally see the fire on your forehead. Let's see what this beastie wants outside. Here's a thought for you. Technically, Birkin has accomplished his mission. So why would he be coming back to bother us again? <laughs> we are still here. some nail clippers, buddy. Anyway, here is the next form of Birkin, his giant claw. That's really all you need to worry about. In fact, I should be worrying about this because I'm actually dying. What I've noticed is a lot of the times he will get into this like rage kind of pose where he'll actually lift his claws and be ready to strike you. And he should be dying here soon, but then again, so am I! It looks like I've got him in the loop I wanted him to. Right now, he'll just be... Oh, look, he's slowing down. Normally, you can get him into this pose. Oh, no! Oh, am I dying? Yes, I'm dying. I was hoping not to get hit by that, damn it. 
Ooh, he's trying for his grab move, which I don't think I ever showed that he had, and I really don't want to die again. Oh, wait. And, oh, wow, he's going slow. Let's see, where's he going? Is he still coming after us? There we go. That's what I wanted to see. And then he just collapses. Awesome. There's quite a few attacks that that Birkin actually has, but a lot of the times, after he does a slash that hits both in front of him and behind him, if you can actually get him in a loop where he puts up his arm for a massive lunge attack that does a lot of damage, you can continuously just hit him a couple times, run away. Hit him a couple times, run away. Because he will always try to do that massive lunge attack, and then you can get a lot of hits on him. Thankfully, I was able to get him in that loop after he nearly killed me, but that's beside the point. Hey, Sherry! I just killed your dad again! Again? What am I talking about? That's the first time we technically fought him. Sherry. Uh, I'm sure it'll keep you safe. Thank you, Claire. Even though I'm an only child, neither of my parents ever spent much time with me because of their work. I grew up alone, but now that you're with me, I finally have someone to rely upon. here for a bit. I'll be right back as soon as I found the antidote for you. I know that's supposed to be a touching scene and I do agree it does hit a few of the chords it's supposed to but for some reason I always imagine Claire nodding off at that story. <laughs> that's what it looks like. I'm sorry. I completely destroyed this scene. That's what I'm here for. And Sherry, I'm glad I brought you to this office. There are tons of items here. I will gladly take these. Let's see, and let me get resituated with my items here. I'll meet you in a sec. There we go. Got my items resituated. I honestly don't think I'll need all this, but just in case, it's always good to have a little bit of extra. Especially these. These are going to be awesome in this section. I can't wait to use them. But Sherry, we'll be right back. We're going to go find that antidote for you. If one exists. You could just walk it off, right? No, once around the field, son, you'll be fine. But now the search is on. That is another really big difference from the B scenario to the A scenario. Something is still chasing Sherry, but now that it's accomplished its mission, now the race is on to find the antidote for Sherry before she dies, or before she becomes a monster herself. That's kind of a huge difference, and I like how sporadically different they are. I guess not sporadically, how just how much of an enormous difference there is between these two scenarios. It's really cool. It's like you're playing two completely different games with the same character. I like different. I've mentioned that many times before. Different is good. I hear plants, and I don't like it. And that's what I wanted to see. More bow gun bolts. Thank you! I was afraid I was going to have to do handgun only for the final boss. Or maybe I will. Probably not, but let's see. doesn't have anything there. I wonder, does the game expect you to actually use a flame round to kill this plant? I'm curious. But first, let's go ahead and turn this on. Anti-B-O-W. Let's test that theory. Oh, wait. Yes! Yeah, they don't give you the flamethrower, but they give you tons of flame rounds, and this is why. 
That's really cool. Guess I never thought of that. And let me guess. Liquors. Come on. There's been liquors everywhere. Why not now? Wait for it. Oh my gosh, yes. Let's see. What would be the best way to take them out? Let's just blow them up. Yeah! Double the liquors, double the death. Oh, I'm so happy I brought these explosive rounds with me. And are there bowgun bolts? No, even more explosive rounds. That's okay. I love how I keep giving this ammo, like, tons of different names. You all understand what I'm trying to say, right? I don't have to say the exact name for everything, do I? And that's the only thing in here, or at least worth getting, besides this ink ribbon, which I'm not going to take, because I've got tons of them. I do love the liberal use of all the items, especially the ink ribbons. Because I mentioned many times before, in the old Resident Evil games, as soon as you run out, you're not saving the game. So you need to, you know, use them sparingly, go that extra room to ensure that you have enough space to save. That is probably one of my favorite aspects of old Resident Evil, and now you just, you know, go up to a typewriter or you press start to save. I don't think any of them do that. I'm just making a point here that it's really easy to save. When, when you actually have the player strategize as to when they should save because they don't have that many saves left, kind of brilliant. And especially with a franchise like this where you have to go forward and go back to previous places that you've already been, having limited saves makes people kind of think outside the box. You know, actually wondering, well, should I do this before I save? Should I, you know, do something here? Should I explore here? Should I kill everything first before I save? It's kind of an interesting concept, and I wish they would have kept with it throughout the rest of the franchise. Nah, I don't need that. I know I said last episode that I pick up everything due to, like, gamer OCD, but that one I just, I just don't need. I'm not going to be using it. But yeah, Capcom, if the rumors are true that you are bringing Resident Evil 7 to E3, please say there are typewriters. It's kind of like the, the little joke at the end of the trailer. It's just like, hey, you got this big old explosion-y action game, but we brought back the typewriters! What do you think of that? I, I don't, Capcom, I'm sorry. If you are bringing Resident Evil 7, this is going to be weird. I do like my theory, though, that the 7 used in kind of like the promotional art, like the rumored promotional art, was actually an incomplete upside down 2. Because then we'd have a remake of Resident Evil 2, and a lot of people would like that more than another numbered entry. Capcom, you can trust me on this one. I've played a lot of Resident Evil. Everyone would love you if you just remade 2. Except for these guys. These guys can go burn. Speaking of which, I would gladly do that for them. Easiest way to kill these things? Flame rounds. One shot for each, they will die and never come back. That's the interesting thing about these enemies. If you shoot them to death with bullets, they will eventually come back. If you burn them, they will never come back. But, let's see, we have defeated a boss, we have started in the laboratories, and we're on the look for an antidote for Sherry. So I'm thinking next time on Resident Evil 2, we're going to continue in the laboratories to try to find that antidote. And be sure to burn every plant in our path. I'll see you guys next time.